Okay, I think we're uh, back online. Welcome everyone to another uh, NMRAX for the 27th of June. Well, that's what it is here at the moment. I think it's probably still the 26th in the States at the moment, but anyway. Uh, we're going to kick off the evening. The Aussies are opening the batting like we do in most of these. Uh, we've got Jerry's got a, a nice collection of uh, layouts for us to have a little look at. Um, and I think there's a, there's a couple in there that may be familiar to a few Americans, and there may be a few people online whose layout may even appear in there. So, anyway, how you been, Brad? I've been uh, very cold down here. I don't know about you up there on the sunny Gold Coast, but it's uh, nice and chilly down here tonight. Well, it is nice and chilly, but I thought I'd just fly the flag for Lionel first before we got going, and then I'll put my jumper back on. But it is a bit cool up here. Um, to all the people in North America, our cool's probably what about all 65 degrees, uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So anyway, so Jerry, you've got another selection here, and uh, if everyone uh, online uh, uh, sits back with their cup of coffee, I see there's a couple of people in the chat here. Uh, we've got Dwight's there. He was asking where that location or that video we used before, that was at Caliente in, uh, in uh, Nevada when I was there last year heading up to Ely. Um, Craig Mackey's here. I hear he's, uh, he's stirring up. Apparently it was someone's birthday a couple of days ago, so we, we may have to uh, announce that later on. But, uh, yeah, we've got a few here anyway. Um, let's tee up Jerry's video. And how you been, Jerry? Oh, pretty good. Quite cool down here. It's about 11 degrees at the moment. That's oh. centigrade. I don't know what it is in that funny stuff. <laughs> okay, well, we'll hit the video and uh, we'll come back for a bit of a Q&A at the end.
Is that that feather? Yeah, I'm coming up to uh, left and back thing. Just going to the left. I'm going to get the floor. Hmm. Not much I can do about that. Welcome to the Great Western Railway in 1959. At the end of an era for many of these private owner wagons, there's one from my hometown. And they came in many colours, many styles of lettering, with the typical chocolate and cream coaches of Great Western, known as God's Wonderful Railway. Many of the buildings are card and paper, which is typical on a lot of these British layouts. And this one is running on DC. And you can see the control panel in the background. And our first passenger train of the day. of industries
typical British villages, many of these alongside the railways. Passenger trains did run quite quickly back in those days. 80, 90 mile an hour was not unusual. Here we'll see a demonstration of the uncouplers on this layout. They're very unobtrusive and they seem to work quite well. And the uncoupler went back down. They look like Scott check rails just before the turnout. This is the terminal town of Gemiston. Change here for an alternative train going up another branch line. A nice variety of rolling stock on the trains. And brightened by the occasional private owner wagon. No great western railways complete without the pannier tank.
Welcome to the Southern Pacific of Jim Gifford. As you can see, it's completely different scenery down in this part of the world. Plenty of attention to detail and plenty of bridges to cross and a very large helix with different levels of takeoff all viewed by cameras on the wall a lot of electronics in the control and monitoring of the station although the trains are not automatic they are run by operators As I said, plenty of attention to detail, as long as you don't look too close, of course. Here we have a few of the bridges, the far trestle and this big one, which is yet to be painted and weathered, but all hand built, very, very nice. There's the camera showing the different parts of the helix and the staging with control lights and panels and switches. All detection circuits are in the, are in the track to give the correct indication of which track is which. The scenery and buildings and the general finish are typical of Southern California. I'm told we're expecting a pair of locos, and here they come. We have an SD Southern Pacific on the front and a cotton belt RSD 15 assisting. Not often you see those running. Welcome to the N-Scale layout of Jeff Lee MMO. A beautiful layout which unfortunately no longer exists. He's taken it all down and rebuilt a new one. I'm looking forward to videotaping the new one. There are no sounds in these particular locos, although they're running on DCC. But you can open the window and you can hear the Pacific Ocean, which is less than a stone's throw away. So it's in a nice area, 
beautiful scenery and everything runs well. Jeff has regular operating sessions with a bunch of other end scalers from around Sydney and the Central Coast. And unusual for some end scalers is running it at a good speed without cricking your neck trying to follow the train. variety of lighting effects and some animation brings the whole layout to life besides just the logos. The extra lighting in places brings it all to life as though there's somebody actually in the buildings.
Yep. Welcome to the Bradbury Connection. This is a British layout in the Southern Highlands, uh, south of Sydney. It runs on DC. Each control panel controls a section which 
in theory, is each region of the British Railways. Currently, we have the Prime Minister at the time, looking diesel, pulling the chocolate and cream coaches. There's plenty of detail on Malaya besides looking at the size of it. You start at one end, you take a cut lunch with you to make sure you survive. All but one of the buildings on the layout are card and paper. There's one small building which is a European plastic kit. All the locos run very well. The drivers pretty good, they don't try to have race cars with them. You can have a crew of six or eight people for a full operating session. Each operator would operate one section and pass it to the next section as the train goes across the layout. time a tree fell down on one end of the train room causing a little bit of damage so when it was rebuilt it was extended another section I think about six feet to add a bit more room sheer size of the room. As you can see, there's plenty of detail around the buildings and around the yards. Very clean and very well looked after. Plenty of room for switching and plenty of industries to be switched.
little bias towards the Great Western Railway. Born and raised within spitting distance of the main line through South Wales. Thank you to the crew at the Brambury Connection for giving us a good run around the layout.
Okay, Jerry, uh, great range of videos there again. Um, we'll quickly go through some of the questions that have come up here on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, and I see you have been over there and, and answered a couple, but uh, Dave and Robert asked, what software do you use to edit your videos? I use the Corel Video Studio. It used to be ULead, that was taken over by Corel. It's what I've been using for about 20 years. Okay, um, I'll keep these questions rolling fairly quick so our our kilt wearing headman doesn't have me and Marty's heads on the chopping block. So uh, Dan asked what the percentage of DC to DCC layouts that you film are. Okay, of the 44 layouts I've got on my list here, eight of them are DC, the rest are DCC. Of the eight, six are British layouts, and two narrow gauge layouts. Okay, that's that's good. Yeah, it's definitely a good range of um, layouts and good quality. I, I even just got a, a message on Facebook from Dwight saying that he loves these layouts from down under. So uh, we always enjoy and look forward to your segments here. Uh, David over in the chat asked, do you use autofocus or manual focus when filming your layouts? Autofocus all the time. Okay, I'll just have a quick browse through here to see what other questions, because I'm sure you're going to jump over into either the Facebook or YouTube chat and, and answer anything that people have um, coming in. Um, oh, yeah, just uh, a quick run of locations um, for some of those layouts just to help refresh at the end here. Okay, of that, of those layouts, the first one, Van Medman, is on the central coast of New South Wales, just, just south of Newcastle. Um, the British layout, or the first British layout, was in Adelaide, about 1,500 kilometres. Uh, Southern Pacific was also in Adelaide. The end scale layout was about 90 k south of here, um, on the waterfront in Sydney. Um, short north, that again is about half an hour north of me here on the central coast. The other British layout was in the Southern Highlands. That's about 200 kilometers from here in the south side of Sydney. Cedar Valley, that's on the central coast as well. Perfect. And the next set of videos, we've got uh, Sydney, Brisbane, uh, Dorigo, and Melbourne. So, yeah, they're from all around the place. Perfect. I, I think you've got a stash of videos that would nearly put Netflix to shame. So, we look forward to it. And uh, I think it's about that time of night again, Martin. I reckon it's the first time we've done done this tonight. Let's see, uh, let's see if it all works. But we had the wheel of chat last week, so we're going to spin the wheel of chat now. It's going to come up with a subject, and then all the people in the chat can uh, answer that question or talk amongst themselves about the subject while we get the next guest ready. So uh, we'll hit the wheel. And the question is, is end scale lost in the hobby? So, well, well, there should be a few colourful replies from that. So we'll uh, head over to here, get Adam set up, and thanks very much, Jerry. My pleasure.